All right, welcome to Grown Folks Live. Uh, let me let me get over here. We don't want to look at my ugly face. We want to get let me get my guy in here. My computer is seriously struggling. We're trying to do a lot of stuff, so please just bear with us. There's the man with the plan. Welcome to Grown Folks Live, screenshot. everybody. We need a what? <laughs> so just put up a big screenshot. Yeah, that, we just need a. I don't know what we need. My poor computer is so angry at me. Uh, but we got it. We are here. We are live. Uh, and we got a lot to talk about. This is only our second episode, and we're super excited to be able to do this. Hopefully, hopefully my computer is going to calm down here in just a second, and we're going to be just fine. But we got lots of stuff that we want to jump into um, from the PUBG update. There is some real upset people with warzone even though we don't play a ton of that here we do play a little bit um there is uh, a madden glitch that i'm gonna i'm gonna tell my boy pootie all about because i know he's unplugged from that madden world and then we're gonna talk about our favorite christmas movie so it's christmas time man it's time to at least talk about some of our our favorite stuff so let's start with PUBG. last time that we were together they they started to reveal some new information i don't know that they technically laid out like a timeline plan they don't do that really well but they still started to tell us a little bit more about what they're doing tell us some of the things that at least interest you we know new map supposedly we're going free here soon and supposedly some updated graphics what's the thing that excites you the most well rumor wise the graphics update or new engine update um to me is the biggest thing um it's not been verified by them but the rumor is that they're going to do an engine update. maybe that will come with the next gen i'm not sure um but the player movement and the grass needs a new engine update so it can be a little smoother i think so the free to plays sounds good and that's coming january 12th so anyone in you know grown folks who has thought i don't really want to drop 30 dollars on that because uh, you know i may not like it it doesn't look like a new gen game which it doesn't um it's coming out in january free to play so feel free to join the group if you want to get the game they're going to have a new training mode to help you try to learn how to play the game and from the looks of that, that part will be pretty interesting. I think it will help a lot of new players learn the mechanics of the guns and stuff early, quickly, a little quicker. Um, so anyone in the group, you know, if you haven't joined us yet and you want to, it'll be free to play, so you won't have anything to lose. So we'll be glad to help you out and try to take some stuff and see if you like it. If you like Battle Royales, it's the best one there is, hands down. It's the most realistic one there is. Um, it's also the toughest there is. So if you don't like a challenge, you may not. That's what I was going to say. I understand that too. A lot of new players I mean, don't hang because it, it's not easy. Don't it's not pick up in war zone play. It, it takes some time. No. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, war zone is a little more arcadey. It's a little easy. It's got aim assist. PUBG has zero aim assist at all. It's all you're aiming. That's what, you know, that's what it comes down to. Um, but going back to the update stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that Crafton has thought this through. Going free to play is cool, but if you don't have something extra to go with that to pull in new people, the game's been out for five years. So most people who want to play it are already playing it right now. So if you want to draw in new people who may be curious about it, like I'm saying, you know, our league our, you know, and grown folks that have it, or other people, you need something else to draw them in. One of the biggest knocks on the game is, is the graphics don't look up to date. So in my opinion, if they really want to capitalize on going free to play, they need a new engine update to go with it when it goes free to play, not five months later, you know, then. Because you can't say, well, we're going free to play and five months from now, we're going to have it. That's not going to draw anyone in. And five months from now, when you do the engine update, those people are going to forget to play in. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they've thought this through, but they're not great at that. So I don't know. It's not um, a lot of I'm hope with holding. these companies and thinking things through. I like, I, I don't know many companies out there that think things through. Um, 
free to play. It's definitely a strategy that we see a lot of companies go now, right? I think we're going to see more and more of that, right? Because they're getting their money from the season passes, the extra coins that people are buying, right? It's the, it is mm-hmm. almost like the mutt way of approaching it, except the game's free. Like you get to play the game for right. free. It seems and feels like late to do that. The game's been out for three years now. Like, I mean, do you, I don't know. The player base feels dead already. I don't see a lot of people grabbing a game that still looks like PlayStation 2 graphics. It's hard. So, like, the graphics aren't going to keep me playing it. And I, I just don't, it just feels like it's a last ditch effort to get people re-energized. And like you said, by the time the graphics update comes out, it's going to be dead again. And I don't know that you're getting them back a second or a third time. And there's a lot of, you and I talked about this a little bit. We don't know for sure. It hasn't been confirmed, but it feels like there's going to be a lot of competition in 2022 for shooter mm-hmm. games, super people. Yeah. I think, Escape for Targive is probably going to come console. We're seeing a lot of shooter games that are going to hit the market in 2022, 2023. They're going to have your updated graphics, won't be as difficult to play, um, and won't be like so realistic that the common, like just, you know, 16 year old who's spending mom and dad's money is going to pick it up. And so I don't know. It, it's, it is our favorite shooter here, but it feels like. It is quickly dying. Well, and that's that's why I say, you know, in my opinion, if they don't if they don't bring that update when it the, the same day it drops free to play, if they don't do it then, they missed the ball. I do agree. This should have been done three years ago. Okay. But also, also you know, they had to get their anti cheat better, which is something that they put out announcement with free to play is that they're upgrading their anti cheat. So if you're going to go free to play, you got to have anti cheat. So that's good. But again, if these things had been done three years ago, like the player base told them they should have been, it should have been free to play. The anti cheat should have been better and it should have been updated or better. If they could have done that three years ago, this game would still be thriving with the player base it had then. But because they didn't, because they dropped the ball on it, and they didn't do it. Player base is struggling now on console, at least. And you know, if they can upgrade it and it good, and it goes free to play, and people start coming in, they might be able to draw people back who left. You know, I think they'll have a better chance of getting people to come back who left the game than actual amount of new people coming in. Yeah, personally. Um, Question. But they've got to have that. They've got to have that update in the engine and the graphics to make it look and run good. So there's already some things that are making me question them. Number one, they're going Unreal Five, and I think I could be wrong, but Unreal Six just came out, right? So they're not even going no. with the newest. No, of the Unreal new- Five just came out. Okay, so they're going. No, four. Unreal Five just released this year. Yeah, they're on four. They're 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 right. going for it. so they're not even using like the newest of the new, all right. So that makes me worry. Here's the second part that makes me worry: code name Kiki, the new map, which people have seen, people have touched, people have screenshots, and it's not coming out for six months. So I'm starting yes. to think the reason it isn't coming out is because that will come out with the new graphics update, and that's just way too late. Because why else are you holding on to that map for six months? Well, um, from what I understood, the way that they described it was when they originally announced Kiki in the summer, they were saying it should come out this December or early next year. And I think if you remember back in the summer, it was leaked that they were going to do an update, an engine update, a graphics update, a next gen update before all that and i think it i think that they've worked on that and it's taken them longer like they probably have two separate teams working on the two different things like one team's working on map one team's working on this update but i think the update was taking so long they probably had to pull people from the map to help with the update because they did say that they had stuff coming out before then and that was what was delaying the map 
So I think that it's a, it's a, it's, I think it's a situation where it was harder for them to do this engine up. So they've had to pull more resources, so it's pushed the map back because I think they want to get that update out before that. And I think their idea was is to get out with free to play and it wouldn't surprise me if their original idea was to go free to play when the new map dropped. But they had planned to already have this engine update in place then, which they don't have ready. So I think that's why it's got pushed back six months. But I agree with you. Telling people you're going to have a new map in six more months. But right now, you're just kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's a long time from now. So. so I know that when Madden came out, they went back to PC you know, two Maddens ago, whatever it was, mm -hmm. it was a ported version and people lost their minds about it. They hated it. And from what we understand, yeah. that's what this is going to be. Do we think that this is going to be an easy copy cut paste or is this going to just take longer? Like it just doesn't feel like that's an easy thing to swap over to a brand new engine with updated graphics like that. Again, I think it's. I think that was why they had to push the map back. So, is it because their original goal was to be done by December, January, and they see that it's not going to be. How much money did you say maybe. they made? Hmm? You told me. I remember you looked this up because <laughs> um, you're like you're like a money dude. I know you told yeah, me. Yeah, their before. first their first year they made the first year they made over dollars, and I think they made over a million dollars. A broke year up a little bit. How much? Oh, a billion, one billion. A billion a dollars, and you can't hire more people to get stuff done. Like that is mind blowing to me. It is well, it's amazing. We, it is me too. But what's what's happened is they've taken all this money. And then, you know, I was telling you the other day they've got an animated series that they've put out, um, a, a animated comic book that they've put out. They're working on like three other games right now. That cowboy game. There's another game that they're working on, and then that um, Castillo Protocol, which is going to be like a single player game. They're working on all three of those now. So they've, I think what they've done is they've taken the money that they've made and they've started putting it out into all these other things instead of putting it into PUBG, which is what made them the money. So that's kind of, it's, it's, it's one of those situations, like you said earlier, we see this the people at the top normally things up because all they're thinking about is money bottom line we want more money this year than we did last year how can we expand what's the data what's the trends blah 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 so that's i we, think that's where the, the, the problem comes down to we talked about the new map which is did i get louder a little bit but that's okay i don't know what's i don't know what happened here something went crazy uh anyway like we're doing our best here. We're trying some new stuff and clearly we got bugs that work out, but the new map Kiki, uh, supposedly it's based on my city. We'll see if that's true or not. Your By the time town. it comes out, we'll literally be in the middle of the ocean, so it won't matter. But um, what are you hearing about this map that excites you the most? I don't think we've seen, at least I haven't seen any like of uh, shots of the city. What was the map? Uh, you're the map guy. I'm not. I don't remember the name of these maps. What was the map that was out last Christmas that was the small city map? Haven. Haven. I I was in the minority. I love that map. It was just, I know it was duos, but it was a fun, quick, lots of action. Um, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be like, that was a test run for what they want to do in a bigger map with these cities, yeah. but it's also going to have like swamp land and a bunch of open areas. And the city portion really excites me because there's cities or towns in the maps now, but they feel very small. And, and I, yeah. I don't know that the newest map that we play tango has probably the best cities, but even that doesn't feel very city ish. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm excited the most about the new map is, is skyscrapers and like a real city feel. What are the things that you're hearing or seeing about the new map that excites you? Well, that's one of the things is um, I really like Taven, the map itself as well. I really like the city atmosphere. You just hate the truck. Map. Yeah, I just hate the truck. That's the only thing, you know, <laughs> the truck was unnecessary, but um, because you couldn't defend it against it. But from my understanding, most of this, this is going to be another eight by eight map. Most of the map, not all of it, but most of it, probably a good three quarters of it, or in the picture, it looks like at least half 
is going to be a giant city with you know, tons of giant skyscrapers. Um, Your Amazon. I, I, I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah, I really think to me that's what's exciting. I really like that you know in city type of battle. You know, um, in the swamplands on the outer edges and stuff, still be cool. And from my understanding, there'll be water and waterways for you to try to get through. There'll be swamps, um, submerged part of the city. Part of the city will be submerged underwater. Um, so those are the type of things I think are fun. One of the interesting things that has is they're adding what is called quote unquote tactical gears. Um, and these things will be things like a duffel bag, assisted heel, recon drum. Those are the only things that are specifically named, but you know, there will be other stuff that they add. Um, I haven't really played their mobile game, New State. I've played it a couple, just messing around. And I, know, I know it has drones in it, so I wonder if they're not, like, because they actually made this mobile game, unlike their last one. I wonder if when they made that, they weren't testing stuff that they can use to put in, you know, the new methods they're adding. And the, when I've seen the recon drones, you know, I know for a fact that that's in the mobile game. So there may be stuff that's in the mobile game that I haven't really noticed that they're, that they're going to pull in. But that'll be different. When they Last add, question. You know, the oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Someone's staring at me. Talking to Huh? <laughs> this is live, man. What are you gonna do? So okay. while Pooty gets some things figured, he can't even. Hear me, so so. There's no reason to even ask him a question. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. It's real yeah, life. Um, last delivered. <laughs> last thing about PUBG, and then we'll move on to subject. I feel like they are straddling a weird lane. They're the super realistic game that's really hard to play. Escape from Targov, another one of those like super hard, very realistic games. You played it. You weren't super impressed with it because of that like really hard mm -hmm. to learn jump in factor, among other things. And then they started implementing like these weird 50 case drops at the end. And now they're implementing all these other like more arcadey factors to a very realistic game. And so now they're like in the middle, like they're not a war zone, a battlefield, but they're not that super tactical, you know, realistic game. And I feel like they're kind of creating or painting themselves into this weird corner where there's no like real audience for their game, you know? Yeah, well, I think because they're trying to draw in more people, they're, they're trying to straddle that line of not letting it lose its core of the gameplay that we love, but mixing it in with, you know, stuff that can draw people in and make it not quite as hard. So I'm not always a fan of it, but um, that's just the way it is. So let's talk about, something. let's talk about a game that I may, you I may, got into. I may right. have to step outside. I may have to step outside for a minute. They're delivering a basketball goal and the guy can't figure out how to drop it off here for some reason. So, yeah, delivery people are not the smartest people in the whole wide world. I don't know. That, like, I literally had one call to me the other day for business. Like, he couldn't figure out hit, how to hit the call button to call the office down to come get the package. So he's calling me. I'm like, brother, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not there. Right? You got to figure this out. Like, I don't know how to help. Um, well, let me step away for like five minutes and help him. And I'll be right. All right, okay. go do that. All right, while Pootie steps away, we'll wait for him to come back. We'll kind of start the conversation uh, around uh, two other games that we play here. Now, Pooty doesn't play a ton of Warzone anymore. We started to really get into it, and a lot of the group was playing it, and then it just kind of died. It kind of went away, and we don't play it as much. I know we have a crew here that still plays it a lot, but they're all pretty quiet of a crew. So um, Warzone is not getting a lot of great feedback right now. They've got... Um, their new Warzone map that's kind of like old school guns and stuff. Um, and it's a fun map. I played it. I I'm trying to play it a little bit more just so that I can kind of uh, get a, a better feel for the game. But it's getting really blasted um, because of things like aim assist, because of things like not registering um, some of the hit markers. And I think 
the hackers have been a big, big problem. No, they did just implement their brand new like anti-cheat strategy and it's supposed to be working really well, but it's not getting a lot of feedback from some of the top streamers, some of them who are walking away from the game because I think EA goes anti-PUBG, right? EA wants the eight-year-old, the 10-year-old, the 12-year-old who are going to one-time purchase this game for a birthday, for the holiday. They're going to drop 20, 50, 100 bucks on the game for mom and dad to buy their skins or get the season pass. They'll play it for three months and then they're on to something else hopefully for them another ea title and i don't know that the game is a hundred percent built uh, from the frame of mind of keeping the, the hardcore streamer the hardcore pro player the hardcore like group community game clan whatever you want to call us from playing their games and so their bar is so low it feels like there is no skill gap we see it in madden right where the skill gaps have been played with between Madden from Madden and some of the like top players, the elite players that feel like they have very good skill feels like that. That's a very small gap, even though the actual skills should be completely different. And I think that's where games like Warzone, uh, Call of Duty, Madden, we're seeing it. I haven't, I don't play 2k, but my assumption is, um, they probably struggle with a little bit of the same thing, but especially the EA titles, you can see their strategy is very, very clear on how to bring on a, a new person into their ecosystem, get them to buy season passes, those microtransactions. Um, you know, one of us says in chat that microtransactions are the future. I don't know that they're the future. I think they're the now 100% right with you. Like, I, I agree that they are they are the way games are going to be sold and probably going to see game prices dry, drop and those microtransactions increase um, in, in every game. So I totally agree with you. It is, they, it is a strategy that they are using. It works. And I think they're going to be all in on that strategy. I, gotta, I, gotta, I guess I got to keep this up so I know when Pootie T comes back as we get a peek inside his living room, I assume. I don't, I don't know. But... Um, and Battlefield's another game, not getting great feedback, right? And it feels like, along with microtransactions, games are released as a beta, and they're not full-finished games that had the resources and teams put behind them. I'm sure COVID has caused a lot of issues that we may not know about as a common consumer, but it's affected every other aspect of our life, from cars to playstations to computer parts silicon like uh, shipping like i'm sure it has to in some way shape or form affect some of these video gaming companies and they're just not getting a lot of great feedback right now they're getting a lot of negative feedback maniac i want to bring this up uh, when pooty was in here uh, just because he plays it and i don't but he says apex is the future even though it's an ea game it's far been the best players that have been there from season one are still playing in season two. And I hear, I do hear a lot of great things about Apex. I don't feel like Apex is, it's always going to be a little bit of a, a niche product because of the futuristic, um, like uh, arcade-ish elements of the game. And so I don't see a lot of like the influencers, the big time streamers, really grinding that game the way that they grind a war zone or a call of duty um even a little i mean that's probably the main one but even a little battlefield a little bit of mad right like they don't grind apex the same way um and i don't i don't i don't know why my my assumption is the same reason i don't play the game i don't enjoy the futuristic kind of halo aspect and i know halo has a tremendous following that game just dropped and uh, is a, a super popular game. I think our friends uh, over, um, their name is slipping my brain just because I want to say it, but they're posting some possible uh, Halo tournaments in our chats. And so if you play Halo, if you have an X Xbox, then you can, um, you can definitely jump in. Welcome back, Pudity. We were just talking about... 
Call of Duty is not getting great feedback right now. They just implemented their anti-cheat, but Warzone um, is the skill. EA, I'm going to try to sum up everything I said in the last five minutes in a couple of seconds, but EA, uh, no, it's not Soden Maniac. It's our other friends. Anyway, uh, EA is their ecosystem as a whole is small skill gap, right? We want the eight-year-old, the 10-year-old, the 12-year-old who are going to seasonal buy this game either at release from their parents' birthday, Christmases. They're going to drop 50, 100, 200 bucks on some skins, season passes, whatever it may be. They're going to play six to 12 weeks and then they're on hopefully for EA to another EA title and they're just they're just keeping that fresh, right? Because if I ask mom, dad, or I use my own allowance for an EA Warzone season pass, that's different from a season pass for Battlefield or a season pass or a Mutt pack, right? And Mad, those all feel like different purchases. Um, and I don't know that the main strategy, I don't think we're forgotten about, I just don't think that the main strategy, the main force behind these games are the hardcore clans, gamers, pro players, streamers. And so what I'm seeing, uh, I talked about Maniac's um, chat. He talks about Apex is the future. A lot of people that play season one play season 10. But I don't see a lot of the pro players or the gamers um, or the streamers, I should say, uh, grinding Apex the way they grind a Warzone. The way, I mean, Battlefield, not so much. Um and, and so I don't know the exact reason. I know my reason. I don't play it. I'm not into futuristic games. That's why I wouldn't get into Halo if I was able ever able to play Halo. I just don't like the robot future. It's just not my thing, right? And so there's we talked about that for a few minutes, and then we started talking about like Battlefield also. They're getting a lot of updates, but they're getting a lot of blowback. And it feels like both in Madden, in Warzone, and all of these EA titles – the skill gap is very small. So even if you're a much better player and I just picked it up, the gap between us is not, it's just small. It's very T tiny. Whereas yeah. PUBG, that gap is massive, which you can yes. see how that strategy also has its backfires because people don't, they only play it for two or three times and they're like, yo, that's way too hard. These graphics suck. I'm going to play something else. <laughs> um, and then, you know, Battlefield yeah. just is buggy. And so it yeah. feels like these games, microtransactions, as Wynn said, are here to stay. They, they're the future, the present. They're, they're going to be here forever. Yeah. The skill gaps have been lowered. It's a very small gap between very skilled and not skilled. And I feel like these games come out as live services. Maybe betas is not the best way to say it, but live services. They're not completely right. finished games um, they are just live services. So that's a lot, but I know you get pretty passionate about some of these things. So let's chew on any of that that you want to, and then we'll go talk about it. Okay. Well, um, all, all of that goes back to what I said earlier about a lot of these games get ruined because of the people in the offices in their high rise buildings who only look at numbers on paper and don't really know anything tangible about the games, why people will really like them. You know, they just look at trends and those things. And when, when you asked me earlier about PUBG, what they made one year, the reason I know what they made in their first year, and this, this goes to this point, um, they were the top earning paid game that year, and they made $1 billion. The 10th highest free-to-play game made more than they did. So the 10th place in highest earnings a free to play game that year made more than a paid game. Okay. And PUBG, you know, they had microtransactions in their game, but also paid for the game. You just reach more people with free to play, bottom line. If you only get 5% people buying, no matter where you go, if you get 5% on free to play, 5% on not free to play, but you've got. 20 million more people in free to play because it's easier to access. You're going to make more money. That's just common sense. And that's actually why I believe things like Mutt and all these other microtransactions have become so big because these companies saw 
people are willing to spend five dollars here five dollars there especially if your game is free to play there is a psychological and i don't know the term there's a psychological aspect that they studied to that they actually have psychologists studying saying we have found that if you don't make someone pay for the game they're more willing to spend five dollars here and five dollars there where normally you would spend sixty dollars for the game and you're done well if you didn't spend anything you might say well i'll spend five dollars here and next month you'd be like well i'll spend five more dollars and you end up spending more than before you're done playing the game so they know that they can make more money that way and a lot of it a lot of the things comes down to customization of your characters in most of these games yep you know allowing your character to look different make them look unique or whatever and that's what a lot of people spend their money on and they're willing to you know if it's only a couple of dollars um but i really think that started with mobile games that's like what really brought that in if you look back at the time of when those things started coming in it was after we had mobile phones and they started having mobile games because a lot of mobile games are free and that's how they get you in and they get you to buy stuff you know through that um so i think console and pc games started learning from mobile yep saying hey we can make more money this way these free-to-play games crushing us profits which you know originally years ago to them they would laugh if you were in a board meeting to say i think we shouldn't charge them for people to buy our game so they can play it they'd be like well we're going to lose money but now that they have proven for you know a decade now free-to-play games will make you billions of dollars if you just do it right so um unfortunately because of that we get unfinished games like you said that are live services because these companies want to push it down as fast as they can again this really doesn't fall on the devs in my opinion this is the people above them bosses they push it out fast because they know we live in a technology age where it's not like it used to be when you bought the game that was it that was the game you got you know they had to finish games then as best they could before they put them out. Well, now, because games come out faster and because of the technology being able to have the access to update it, they're like, why, why should we wait three more years to and put out a perfect free, game? And if they're free, there's more options to take my attention and my money away. And so now, mm-hmm. not only do you have to come out with your game every year, but you got you got to have a seasonal updates and you better like right. develop some things that keep me... Because if not, there's other new free games coming out, and I'm going to go hop over there and spend my money there. That's right. That's right. And these companies have seen that, and because of that competition, you know, they have to compete in that in that arena now. So that's I honestly believe that's why Battlefield came out unfinished. It's it has a good core about itself, but it's just not a finished game when it came out, and that's why they've you know that's why the game was on sale for half price last week. You know? like a month after it finally came out because they weren't getting the sales that they expected to from it. And that's because they pushed out a, a game that wasn't totally ready, really. You know, they delayed it a month, but they needed more than a month, you know, clearly. And it um, had been, what, finish two it. years? So, three years? How long before the last Battlefield came out? I think it was two... I think it was two years ago that Five came out. And it's still... So, you know, it was jacked up, which, and I'm going to talk about some stuff I don't 100% know. So I'm throwing that out there that I feel like I got to put a disclaimer on everything I say on my streams because by God, it's Bible. Um, super people is that much more impressive to me. I have no clue how long they've been working on it before they released it. But as a closed beta, it felt like such a more finished product than 90% yeah. of the games out there. It really, uh, yeah, it made me really excited about what they're trying to do as a, a company. And I know it got some blowback from some streamers that it was a PUBG copy and paste, but um, whatever. Like, uh, I really, it was very impressive that their game didn't feel glitchy watching a lot of streamers because I don't have a PC. Um, so I watched a lot of streamers play it. You didn't hear a lot of like rock glitching or crazy gun glitch. Like, it felt like a finished product. <laughs> Even as a closed beta, uh, but you know, before they do all these other, you know, the game, I don't think releases for a couple more months. It's just a, it was pretty crazy to me how finished of a product it felt. Yeah, I agree. The, the few times that I got to play the closed beta, 
I felt like I was playing a game that was already released. I mean, it didn't feel like a beta. It felt ready, you know. Um, so in that aspect, yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's, I think it shows good potential. Um, they're also a company in Korea, just like PUBG, uh, Crafton is. And that, you know, they, they have openly said that they built this game to compete with PUBG. So, of course, it's going to have a lot of similarities to it if they want to compete with it. It's got that realistic feel. It's got good recoil on the guns. It's not easy. It's not just simple to control. You know? um, the stuff like that is very much like PUBG. It's a battle royale. So, you know, whenever you two battle royales, there's a similarity. So, you know, you've got inside of the safe area. You're trying to find loot and be the last team standing. So, um, I, I do see a lot of similarities in it, but I did like it too. And, um, I believe, I still think it'll be on console by the end of next year. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, one more thing about shooters and then we're going to talk a little bit Madden, um, news dropped this yeah. week, right? Dr. Disrespect is starting his own triple a company uh we know that uh there are a couple other uh, the guy who originally created PUBG players battlefield unknown or bet player unknown battlefield he's kind of going to do his own thing we know that there are these new things like super people it feels like we might be on the cusp of like some of the greatest era of shooter games that we've ever seen well the one that um brandon green's doing I, I'm pretty sure his he said his isn't a shooter. Oh, it may be more of a survival game, kind of like Daisy or something. That's, okay, that's the I get. And he's been working on it now for I think two. Months. So, um, he hasn't shown anything since about a year and a half ago. And what he showed then was just like a, it was a lightning storm, and the camera was out in the woods, and the trees were blowing and stuff. And that's all you really saw. Um, so you don't really get much of it, but he did openly say it was not a shooter. So I don't know what he is making, but I feel like it's more of a survival type Daisy um, type game than anything shooter, like necessarily shooter, like what we think of as a shooter. Um, and the one that Dr. Disrespect is doing, from what I've heard of his idea, I'm not sure how well it's going to take off. Because he's wanting to do a battle royale, but it's a, a, a vertical, like yeah, yeah. So you're basically fighting on like you're not you're in a high them. rise, or you'll start at a level <laughs> in the high rise, and either like a flood or gas or something will push everybody up, and you have to like survive levels, which is like a different twist on like a battle royale. He's got yeah, I mean, and it might be it. okay, but I, just hearing it, I'm just thinking like. It, it feels like you're too limiting of your player movement. If you're stuck inside of a building, unless the building, like, map itself is so big, you know, like the, the floor layout is so huge, it's like several football fields. It's going to feel very limiting that you can only, that you're stuck in these four walls, you know, where every other um, battle royale, you're in an open area, you know. You can literally go anywhere. You're not stuck inside of a box. So that's the part where I feel like they, it, this idea could have its flaw. Of it's going to, I think it's going to make it feel limiting being stuck in this box the whole time, and you can't get out. You know, you, I don't know. Maybe they can do it well, and it'll it'll be good. I don't know, but it'll uh, be see. interesting. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little Madden, and then we're going to talk some Christmas and get everybody out of here. I appreciate everybody hanging yeah. out. Please leave any questions, comments, anything in the chat. We'll try to, to get to them. Um, again, we're just trying to create uh, some um, uh, monthly shows that we can do together uh, that allow us um, an opportunity to connect the whole entire uh, community. And it just hit me that I was supposed to grab the updates, and I totally forgot. Pootie just gave me the finger. What? One quick thing before we stop on shooters. I, I just really want to invite everyone and grown folks, if you like Battle Royales, hit me up. We'll be glad to help you out when it comes out free. Don't spend your money on it. Wait till it comes out free. There's going to be training areas. We've got lots of cool people in our clan who will be glad to 
you know, teach you the ropes, show you how it is. Um, I think you'll enjoy it if you like battle royales and you like realistic action. So, you know, I invite all the people and grown folks to try it out when it comes out free to play. It will be, um, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Just what, what people think of it. Um, it's a tough game, but it's definitely worth uh, the, the the sacrifice to to try to figure out. So, um, come grab it and and come hang out with me uh, or Pooty and the the clan, not with me. Uh, you get what I'm saying. With you um, also, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, we got to play some more Battlefield though, and I got to get you at least try yeah. Warzone once or twice. Um, I have I have actually played that new map on Warzone okay. a couple of times. And it's okay. I, I just it's okay. I have a hard time. I have a hard time with World War Two era stuff. I just it's totally fair, I, you know. But I think Firestorm would have been a great battle royale if it. Had I totally a, agree. You know, it could have been great, and they. That's why I was so dis- disappointed they didn't do it with the new one because it's a current era shooter, and they could have done something really good. But maybe they will later on. We'll see. Yep, and I had fun playing. Yeah, we, we, we can try out Warzone. We, play. we should try out Warzone. I just have a hard uh, time, you know, whenever I go to load up, it's like, I have that itch. I want I want another chicken dinner, you know? <laughs> no, I get it. I totally get it. Let's talk tough. Let's talk Madden. Um, yeah. Pulling up uh, our update. Only the TFL had an update, so I'll make sure I have that by the end of the show. So I don't know what you have or have not heard. You, of course, help uh, our guy over at Daddy Leagues. Poppy does such mm-hmm. an, a great job, and, and you've been his kind of right-hand man uh, for quite some time. Um, Madden, uh, it came out recently over the last couple of weeks, has some type of uh, glitch uh, in, during the draft uh, where if you pause during the draft at all, um, or if you, for some leagues, if you, uh, skip, um, don't skip straight to the season. If you stop in the preseason, that it causes a loop glitch and restarts the draft. So when you go to advance to the season, um, it restarts, um, the entire, um, the entire draft. And so people get in this loop and the draft doesn't hold and they got to restart the entire draft, all that non fun stuff. And, Here's the one thing. This is my personal opinion. I am never going to be um, pitchforks and lighter fluid guy. I, I know that it's the it is the ugly side of social media. It is the great side and the ugly side is that now everyone has a voice. Literally, you can pick this device up and you can have an opinion and a a group of people that will support and listen to that opinion, no matter where, how far, doesn't matter. Like someone will agree with you. And, and there's some great things about that. Um, and then there's the ugly side where when the mob mentality kicks in, it can get ugly. At the end of the day, Pudi, this is my personal thoughts. No one wakes up and goes, I'm going to try to completely be as bad at my job as I can be. I'm going to upset as many people as I possibly can. I'm going to put out the worst product that I possibly can put out. I'm going to create the most flawed game, and I'm just going to try to jack it up as much as I can just so I can get attacked on Twitter. I just don't like no one. Everyone wants to be successful. And and I think Madden, love them or hate them, they attempted to do some good things by going out and getting people from the community to come be a part of their team. And they found some dudes who were putting a lot of energy and effort to come be a part of their team. If you've ever walked into any organization, you don't change culture overnight. It takes time. And watching some of these guys being held accountable for things that they didn't have nothing to do with, things that they don't have the skill set to fix, but yet because they're from the community, they're now expected to be the voice piece of the community from Madden to the community. It's just ridiculous in my opinion. Um, And Mm -hmm. you and I, in our jobs, we can clock out and go home and people usually, I mean, not me anymore because I still commission Madden League, but most of the time people leave us alone and 
on on you know watching the mob attack some of these Madden people to where either a they can't be on Twitter or it gets real personal. I just can't. I can't get with that vibe. I just can't. It, and to me, it's simple. You don't like the product? Don't buy the product. Go do something else with your life. Go do. Go find right. something else and and shut up. Like no one needs the negativity, the ugliness, the attacking. Um, and I just watched how like the community started to rally behind, you know, uh, let's attack. Let's just talk about how crappy this game is. And let's demand this idea that you, like no one owes you anything. I, I guess that's the part I struggle with. Like I paid for my game. I got the product that they created and I either play it or I don't. They, they don't owe me any explanation of that game. Now I can go return it, get my money back or not buy it in the future. But like, they don't owe me that. Like PUBG doesn't owe me an explanation about PUBG 2 or graphics updates or they don't, it's smart. It's not a good strategy to not communicate with your community. It's not a good, it's not a smart yeah. business strategy to isolate them. But I don't, this idea that they owe it to us is, is ridiculous to me. Um, and, and that's what began to happen over the last couple of weeks is that, uh, People were demanding answers, and and this Twitter message I was tagged on was, you know, two hundred deep, and I was just like, I, I got enough negativity in my life. I don't have a. I don't have time to read this, and b. I don't need this kind of energy in my life. But you, you've been one of those people that decided to walk away. You gave up a great league, a great community. I mean, you still help Pappy, but that's about it. Um, you walked away from Madden. They did do some improvements this this year, but it is a catch twenty two. It is a flaw game, but as we've already talked about, Warzone Battlefield, it's they're all flawed, and some are worse than others. But they just don't give us a finished product. Um, it's a very flawed game, and it also at the same time feels like the community is never happy. It, there's they're never going to do anything that will make the community. Um, Shut up, I guess. That's not the word I'm looking for. But, like, make them feel like uh, they're being heard, listened to. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And people who are gone, it just, I just don't understand this, like, mob mentality that takes over on Twitter sometimes. But, um, yeah, I don't even know what comment I'm looking for. I'm not really looking for a comment. But now that you hear <laughs> what Madden has done, I know that you're pretty passionate about your Madden feelings. Well, um uh, I totally understand what you're saying, and that's just a problem in our society now, in general. Uh oh, I lost you. I lost you. Hold on. Hello, Pooty. I lost you. I lost you. I, I can't tell Pooty I lost him. Something happened, Pooty. Poor guy. I think your headphones went out. Well, why Pootie figures that out. Turn them off. I'll shut up while you talk. How about now? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think your headphones okay. might have died on you. Okay, no, I was just saying, you know, that's really a, a problem in our society in general today is the mob mentality. Anyone we don't like, anyone that says something we don't like or does something we don't like, we want to cancel them. We want to go back to them because somehow we are morally superior than they are. Um, that's just, in general, our society has went that way because of social media and sin, which we can have another discussion on another day. But that's really the correlation there um, and why this is happening. But um, on the one hand, everything in life should have a balance. On the one hand, you don't want to say, you guys keep making the crappy game and I'll just be happy and I'll shut up. Because if you do that, then you're telling them, hey, you're doing a great job. And they're not. So that's not good. But on the other flip side of that, you don't want to be like, you know, sending people death threats and stupid stuff and wishing ill upon them because they work for a company who likely the people farther above them who will never hear from if you're writing on Twitter, you know, they're the ones who really are causing these issues. 
and this goes back to what I said earlier, you know, I don't think a lot of the devs, I, th- I'm, I feel like most devs stick with a company because they want a job like we all want for our families. That's the field they got into. It's the game that they like, but then they have someone above them that's causing either to rush everyone, not giving enough resources, a combination of both that causes stuff like this to get through testing and then not get caught. And then it gets pushed out live because this goes back to that live service thing, you know, now that they have this new ability to be able to update, well, we can update now, but you can also throw in new bugs that weren't there before because of that. All of it, you know, a lot of people in our society want everything to have one simple fix, and most problems don't. There's so many different layers of issues that has to be taken care of. And um, the problem for Madden, that in my opinion, is different than what I said. The difference is, to me, is EA help facilitate pushing 2K out, pushing their competition out, and getting a license so that no one else can make that game. So they they literally are the only ones that have any second NFL simulation style football game. So because they did that, and because they pushed out a game that lots of people still say was a great game. That already caused animosity between them and the player base. And then when you look at how much EA makes every year, under the following people do. Yep. It's, um, sorry guys that, uh, a lot of junk just happened, but we are back now. And, uh, it's what happens when you move your desk and you're not set up like as a all the time place and it's temporary. It's, I, I'm going to download them both, edit them together. We'll be okay. But um, I think one of our next shows, I want to start to slowly implement some of uh, you and I's like personal beliefs and uh, add that in. That's how Christmas, we're going to wrap the show up. Man, you had issues to start us off. And then now I got issues because I'm unplugging stuff. It's just one of these days we're going to figure this all out, Pootie T. But um, favorite... (laughs) Christmas show. What is your favorite must-watch Christmas show? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, hands down. It's my wife. The first one, or all of them? No, the Christmas Vacation one. The one with Chevy Chase. Um, But there's three, isn't there? Like they're they're all like. Isn't there three or four? Like they're all they're just like one goes to Vegas, one's like at home, one goes blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, but this one is the Christmas. This one's called the Christmas Vacation. No, okay. Christmas and uh, that's my favorite. Pam would answer the same if you ask her. Hers would be that's one. We watch it every year. Um, I've already watched it at least once or maybe twice already. Um, what is it? Year. What is it about that yeah. one? It's I don't know. It's just um, you know I remember as a kid watching it. And um, it was just really, really funny of all the, it seemed like no matter how hard he tried to make things work, something always went wrong. And Chase, you know, my opinion, that era was one of their greatest comedians that we had back then at that time period. There were some others, but he was one of them. And, you know, they just don't do it like that anymore. And uh, he, he was just really good. One of my favorite comedians back then and still is. Um, so... I just, I just, the movies are really funny. I mean, I like all the National Lampoon um, vacation movies, but the Christmas vacation one, you know, for Christmas time was just, it's the best for me. Yeah, it's definitely up oh, there yeah. for, for our family. It's It's been, I think that one has only been the last couple of years, though. Like, it wasn't one that I grew up on. Uh, team, I'm telling you right now, I don't know why Pootie's Skippy. He wasn't Skippy. He isn't Skippy on the tool that we use to put him here but he's skippy and i don't know why it's not his fault it's my fault uh i I don't know what's going i'm so frustrated with technology but anyway that one has been like a new one for my family that has become like a tradition uh but the grinch i don't know why but jim carrey in the grinch just was like the perfect like actor for the role and every other grinch just feels like a not good version uh, compared to his. Mm-hmm. Like I love that movie. It's it's the movie I have to watch. 
Um, definitely National Lampoons is is part of like the rotation. I personally like the uh, oh man, it's slipping my brain. The one with the Christmas train. What was that called with uh, Tom Hanks? Polo uh, Express. Polo Express, Express, right? Like that's definitely like in the rotation for me. Um, I'm a like I like Charlie Brown. I grew up on like Charlie Brown Christmas and all of those stop animations and claymation type stuff. Like I love watching that uh, during the holidays, but. The Grinch is on the to-do list. National Lampoons always happen. So the Gremlins is a good one too. You see, I, that one um, and a couple of other ones that if you like search Rotten Tomatoes top fifty Christmas shows, uh, it just doesn't feel. I know it happens in Christmas, and there's like Christmas scenes. I, I yeah. can't put Christmas in like horror movies, even though Gremlins isn't really a horror <laughs> movie. I can't. Those two things don't go together for me. Uh, I will probably upset a lot of people. Um, I can't do the elf. I, I just, I, elf is, I, I want to hang funny. myself three minutes into that movie. Really? I know. That movie's funny. <laughs> I know. I can't. I like Will Ferrell. You don't like Will, you don't like, you don't like I Will like Ferrell. Do you? I can't, I can't oh. handle him in that movie. It's That's too, fine. it's too over the top. It's too, it's like, I don't know. I can't even put my finger on it. I just can't do the elf. It's uh, it's too much for me. Well, Pooty, put a uh, put a bow on everything. Twenty twenty two is around the corner. Uh, we're gonna get to do a lot more streams with all of us having some time off. Uh, what are you looking forward to in twenty twenty two when it comes to uh, the community, to gaming, and just kind of give us some closing thoughts as we put a bow on this. Um. Well. For the community, I just hope everyone has a blessed new year ahead. I'm glad everyone made it through this year. And um, hopefully there will be some more cool games come out that we can continue to grow the community with. Um, if anyone has any ideas of games that they like, that we'd like, like you've mentioned before in the Discord, you know, there's games that you like that you think others might like, you know, bring it up to us and we'll see if we can get enough people interested to start a group and, you know, places to post and, Trying to draw more people in, um, you know, the more the more people in the community, it's always better when you have people that you can play games with that you like. I think most of us know most of the time in most games, if you're playing multiplayer, and you're trying to play a friend, it's normally not fun. I don't care what game you're playing. Um, it's just always better to have people that you can relate with and play with that you are used to playing with. Um, so hopefully, we can find some more stuff like that to to grow the community. You're never wanting to try out PUBG. Come join join the clan at least for two and just try it out. You know, see what you think. Um, and outside of that, I just hope everyone has a blessed year ahead, and hopefully we we can have some cool things to talk about next year. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a great time. I'm really excited to, to grow the community in 2022. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of games that that open up a lot of opportunities. It just takes a leader like Pooty to kind of organize it, put some energy and effort behind it, and and a group will take off. You know, we used to have FIFA, we used to have NASCAR, um, we used to have baseball, basketball. Like, there's a lot of game opportunities for us to grow the community. Um, I try to change my perspective and and kind of standard of like, if you're not playing here, you got to go. And instead, now I'm trying to like keep people because people kind of go and come and go and come. And so I'm trying to create a community that does that. But um, I, I, that's why, you know, we're trying to do this. We're trying to figure out through technology how do we put you on video all the things i think we're gonna streamline this and do it better he and i started doing this years ago back on the daddy leagues podcast that we used to do so we'll get better at this we'll make the quality better we'll get through all these technical issues and hopefully it'll be something that the community as a whole starts to come through the tfl did give a, a quick update and uh, so they just finished, or they're starting, just finished season one. They're starting season uh, two. I think they just started yesterday. Uh, they do have nice. New England opening uh, open. And so uh, daddyleagues.com forward slash 
TFL, uh, Bloop and Cooley and the gang over there are just awesome dudes. And so uh, they are a no switch league. So if you're looking for a great Madden league, they have an opening. Uh, make sure that you go apply and check them out. Um, I know that we yeah. kind of all TFL and OMFL play similar rule sets. So we all kind of share owners. So hopefully we can get them full and, and uh, get them excited and, and back rolling for more and more seasons. But um, Pooty, I enjoyed doing these with you. We fought through all kinds yeah. of technical stuff, but we figured it out. We'll and, and, the yeah. <laughs> and the delivery. And a delivery. And and people walking behind me, but luckily you couldn't see a whole lot of that. But we'll be back with you in January. We'll have hopefully some new updates. If you're a leader here, remember uh, we have that Google form. We want to bring some of you in to interview you and talk about your league and where again, we're just looking for a way to connect the grown folks community as a whole, because I think we're all kind of in our silos and we're trying to com- connect the community as a whole. And uh, so come hang out with us next time. So guys, have a great Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We'll be back on stream. So come hang out with us. And I can't wait to see you next time. Until then, God bless. Peace. All right, you there? See. Sweet, I think. Nope. Yep. Yep. I can't. <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah. Well, at least. Yeah, like, I don't. They seen it on this huge, like, almost like a half of a tractor trailer. I don't know why. It didn't need to be. It fit in the back.